This is OFA Teen Talk, an Oxfordshire FA production. This week on OFA Teen Talks, our Senior Football Development Officer James Shipley sits down with QPR Youth Development Phase Coach Katie Wales and Oxford United Regional Talent Club Coach Rob Porter to talk coaching journeys, how they've continued to deliver through lockdown, epic scavenger hunts and preparing to get back on the pitch. Hello and welcome to another OFA Team Talk. I'm delighted to be joined by Katie Wells and Rob Porter, both UEFA B coaches from Oxfordshire. How are you both? Very good, thank you. Yep, pretty good. Good to hear. So what have you two been getting up to recently through uh, through lockdown? How have you found it? Ladies first. (laughs) Such a gent, Rob. Um, (laughs) To be honest, lockdown to me has been, certainly this lockdown, has been quite quick. It's seen quite quick and I think that's probably because we've had a good routine and, and stuck to kind of normal timelines of what we did what we've been doing so from my perspective it's been as I said fast and uh, not too different really. I think it's been quite nice knowing that there is at least a sort of semi-permanent end to it it's not like we could be in this for months you know so it's not been it's not been ideal but in fairness I think we've made quite a good you know quite a good go of it and you know done the best we can with the situation. Yeah it's certainly been certainly been a lot different this time around thankfully. Yeah. Uh, so Katie, tell us a bit about your football journey. What's what's your background and where do you coach at the minute? So at the minute, I'm foundation phase and YDP phase lead at QPR. Been there kind of eight years, but I guess my journey started way back when, when I was kind of dragged up with two older brothers. I used to play when I was kind of eight or nine and then had the opportunity at school to do my level one, which I'm really grateful for. So uh, kind of got into the coaching side of it from there didn't necessarily use it so much because I was still kind of 15, 16 at the time. Um, And then across the years, picked up various groups. I guess my journey has covered boys, girls, under six, through to adults. Um, And then in kind of later years as well, um, some of the kind of FA mentor and stuff. But from picking up those groups, I think you kind of get to realise what those groups need and therefore kind of progressing through the badges as such has always been to make sure that I'm not kind of inhibiting players. And um, so with the groups that I've worked with, as they've progressed, I've had to make sure that I've progressed as well. And so that's kind of led me to where I am today. And then obviously considering the future as well, I don't know how we get on. So certainly, uh, certainly heavily involved, shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it something that you're looking to get more involved in or are you, you happy with, with sort of what you're doing at the minute? As it stands, so I'm... Uh, so fairly new parent, he's 15 months now. And um, I've had to kind of readdress the, I say work-life balance, it's more like work-work-life balance. So obviously the day job, the football job, um, and then also trying to trying to look after the family as well. So I think for the time being, um, I'm happy where I am, but that doesn't mean um, kind of standing still and, and stagnating. Um, it does mean not taking on too much more but there's still plenty of opportunity to develop yourself in and around that yeah absolutely and I'm sure sure knowing you you'll you'll continue to do that Rob how about you what's your your background yeah so obviously I, I played a bit when I was younger you know with a young family sort of football took a back seat through my 20s uh, it wasn't until I got the opportunity to, to help out with my son's grassroots team uh, a few years ago now so I went on from there did my level one uh, did my level two was lucky to get some really good mentoring in the meantime, you know, worked with some really good coaches, did my UEFA B a couple of years ago now and my youth awards. So now I'm sort of, I do try to stay connected with grassroots, helping out my son's team a bit. Um, I work with Oxford United in the community and I work with Oxford United RTC, which is the girls' academy. So pretty busy. How, how's it been making the jump from grassroots to the RTC? Uh, yeah, really good in fairness. You know, it's a really good setup and it's good being around some quality coaches and the, the technical directors also a massive bonus as well, getting to work under a, a really good technical director. So it's been a really good help for my coaching. Sounds great. And I've certainly got a lot of experience out here with me. So uh, it should be a great conversation. It's been an interesting year, shall we say, 
particularly for football, as well as everything else. How have you kept interacting with your players away from the pitch? How have you been supporting their development through a period where you can't see them every week? I'll let you go first on this one, Rob. Yeah, I've literally got off um, two Zoom calls this afternoon, had a Zoom with my my son's grassroots team, we did a little quiz, and then full mastery session with the RCC, which fortunately it was one of the women's first team players actually doing the ball mastery, so it wasn't actually me with the ball at my feet. But yeah, I think it's you know it's been a, it's been a mixture of things in terms of with the first lockdown, um, the RTC did a really good job with the the different skills challenges every day through Twitter and sort of social media, and obviously I spend sort of half my life on Zoom at the moment, which is um, so so I didn't think I'd be saying before this year to be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, things like I think the favourite one that we've done is actually it's not even really football related, but a scavenger hunt was just absolutely epic getting the players to just sort of come up, find random items around the house was so much fun. And at the end of the day, you know, although it's it's football related as well, that enjoyment factor and, you know, in a situation where maybe kids aren't having the greatest of times, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes where they're giggling, they're having fun can make a massive difference to their day. Yeah, absolutely. What what did you have them finding in the scavenger hunt? I was, I, I was going to be a bit cruel and sort of, I've saved things like the left-handed screwdriver and a bucket of tartan paint and stuff like that and nothing there. So, um, yeah, anything from a DVD to a football boot to a blade of grass to some out in the fridge. I think the best one was um, it was someone in your house, a member of your family's sock that they're currently wearing, which was uh, quite an interesting one. <laughs> sounds like uh, sounds like a great laugh. Yeah, it was. They, did, the, did the players enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, some good feedback as well. So, yeah, you know, things like that. Are, you know, it's enjoyable for the players, keeping them engaged. So, yeah, pos- really positive. That's fantastic. Katie, how about you? How have you um, interacted with your players away from the pitch? I've just been pretty similar, to be honest. Zoom, Zoom must be rubbing their hands. <laughs> so, we've, um, I think, as Rob said, this lockdown to me, when we were allowed to resume from the last one, this one was inevitable. So I've always kind of had it at the back of my mind that at some point we would need to kind of switch to digital mode as such. But, you know, going into it, I kind of thought in terms of outcomes, if we can achieve nothing but bring these girls together to make sure that they're interacting with each other. Um, And as I mentioned before, in terms of how lockdown's gone for me, we kept the routine. So we literally get together the same times they would during their um, face-to-face training. We kept the routine for them, kept the routine for us. Um, and it's been a it's been a real mixed bag. So there's been a football kind of theme running through it all. But as Rob said, we've had some some silly games, um, quizzes. We've got a big family quiz coming up on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, Friday. Um, and that's been the other kind of massive thing as well. The parents and stuff have kind of almost been really keen to, to <laughs> see what's going on and get involved. They drop their heads in in terms of the kids laughing and and having fun with all the stuff that we've been doing but yeah it's also given us an opportunity to work through kind of some of the injury prevention stuff so our physio um for our first team kind of reports back to us what sort of common injuries and things we've got so we also have had kind of fifa 11 plus stuff running through there to kind of help with some of the physical side of it but yeah the face-to-face stuff is is predominantly social focused also getting them to think about different player attributes loads of bits and pieces we did a um i'll give it a little plug we get, we did a, a a charity run we are doing a charity run and um, just a kind of competition uh between the youth squads and the senior squads um just to raise some money for charity whilst we're doing it as a bit of added motivation and that doesn't i say run it's cycle run walk whatever you whatever you can do so yeah looking after their mental health in that respect as well but also achieving some physical side of it. We've done a sort of a lot of um, S&C work on sort of one day a week session. And actually, yeah, a lot of the parents have been getting involved because, you know, we said it's, it's not just the kids. If parents want to do it as well, I must admit, I've, I've done every session as well because I think, you know, it's that little bit of leading by example. If you expect the players to do something, then I think you should, you know, be, be willing and able to do it yourself if you possibly can. So, yeah, that's been really good to see as well, to go through the, the family interaction through it all. There was a, a funny session where I hadn't planned to get involved. So speaking of kind of your network and coaches network, somebody that I did my level two with has kind of progressed quite high in the ranks in physical prep 
Um, so I invited them along to do a session with the girls. I wasn't expecting to join in. I was wearing jeans and a jumper. I was forced to join in, and that that was a <laughs> that was a hot session. <laughs> well, but, like, well, yeah, exactly. And like you say, lead by example. We're all in it together. You've both mentioned the family and the parents getting more involved there. Do you think that you'll be able to translate that back to your face-to-face training sessions? Because one thing you know we've discussed before is having the parents involved and having their input to help you out as a coach. Do you think you'll be able to use that now as a, as a better tool on the pit? I'm really fortunate in that I've got a very good group of parents. Um, that said, I don't think that's by accident. That's through a lot of hard work. But I'm hoping that, you know, it's just going to continue as it was before um, and hopefully even better. Yeah, uh, same as. I think we've got a, sort of quite a good bond with the parents and, yeah, and hopefully, you know, continue that and, yeah, good vibes and keep them going. No, sounds great. And it it sounds like you've been certainly been keeping them going in terms of the players on both physical and mental challenges and, and activities, which you know including all four corners of the uh, player development model so hopefully you know you've developed them as as players just through through a computer screen eh, Rob? yeah, um, yeah. you know and, and any any development's good development definitely in terms of your ideas then that you have delivered whether it's on the pitch or whether it's been through these these zoom calls or virtual sessions where have they come from are they literally just ideas that you've been coming up with or have you been taking ideas from uh twitter websites that kind of thing where's where's yeah. the information coming from through i must say through the power of twitter sort of put a, a tweet out and sort of put a bit of what i've been doing and asked for other coaches feedback and got some really good ideas following other clubs as well you know you get to see sort of what other clubs are doing so it was york rtc um, they sort of they had a Monopoly game that they made up, which looked really fantastic the other day. So that's a good inspiration. Um, a bit of yourselves as well, you know, just trying to come up with ideas. The same as session planning, a bit of guidance, but then you come up with what you want to work on. So, yeah, I think it, it's a bit bit of a mixture of everything, to be honest with you. Ours has kind of been the same, but the um, one of the sessions in particular, a couple of parents had, had spoken to me about concerns with nutrition namely in terms of making sure that the girls were having enough to to live their active lifestyle so we were keen to get that one included and we've actually launched a kind of we call it the great QPR cook-off so we've got a little cooking competition just to kind of bring that to life for the girls but the other bits I guess it is similar to kind of face-to-face delivery as well but more so we've asked the girls so what do they want it's their sessions it's bringing them together what do they actually want from them and we and we do perhaps as I said, even better than, than face-to-face. We have the opportunity to debrief on these sessions. So when we do our technical session on a Sunday, because we've got the light, it's always, okay, what do you want to do in terms of uh, anything different from this next week? Interestingly, last week they said, ah, oh, we want to do some stuff with some cones. <laughs> I was like, all right, <laughs> we'll do some stuff with some cones then. But yeah, it's just making sure that they've got ownership and they're enjoying it. Bit of everything, really. Players missing cones. Who thought we'd ever see that, eh? But no, they all had cones as well. That was what I found interesting. <laughs> what was the uh, best issue you, uh, you saw in the cook-off? The cook-off's not over yet. Okay. So we've just just launched it. So I'm waiting. It's actually a um, I've given them a video challenge for it. So they've actually got to cook something. They've got to video it, and then they've got to uh, let us know what it is. And we've got kind of different categories in terms of pre-match, post-match, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so. I've, um, yeah, I'm awaiting their entries. I'm told that they're working keenly through the videos at the moment, which will be exciting to see. What you need to do is get them to send you samples as well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'll need to, uh, I'll need to up, for, uh, make myself go up through the ranks on that uh, running challenge <laughs> if that's the case. Yeah, but you get some free dinner for a few nights, Katie. Yeah, that's true. So, like I said at the start, you're both UA for B coaches. You've said yourself about the experience that you've got. What are some of the key messages that you'd be given to coaches, particularly those that I guess haven't got the experience that you've got when we're looking to get back on the grass next week? My view is focus on the social, still that continuation. I think there will be a big inclination for some people to kind of go, oh, fitness, fitness, fitness. But to me, lockdown 
the last lockdown and then even more so with this one has just emphasized the the need for the enjoyment of playing sport so that's what we're going ahead with Rob I don't know about you, from your side yeah I think obviously fortunately with this one just being a mum in terms of sort of the transitioning back it shouldn't be too bad you know with the last lockdown having players not potentially play for a few months it was non-contact and then building up very slowly so hopefully we should go back into so it resembles sort of normal training, you know, reasonably quickly. But that, as you said, that social corner, massive. I think for some players, just maybe keep an eye on them because, you know, some players might be slightly tentative having not kicked a ball for a month. So maybe make sure that everybody's feeling all right, have a good chat with them at the start of the session, make sure they're doing a good place. And uh, yeah, then hopefully sort of get back to some sort of normality, fingers crossed. Yeah, definitely. And I think they'll be... Uh they'll be raring to go as well. I think I don't think there'll be a player in the country that's not not excited to get back on the pitch and, like you say, get back to some kind of normality again. It's quite a funny timing because obviously we're only going to have a, a short kind of interlude back before we then got a kind of Christmas break. Let's pray that the uh, early winter weather is good to us <laughs> and that we don't have that factored in as well. I think one of the best things is actually through the first lockdown, one of the only bonuses from it was... You know, going to play for ground at grounds afterwards, where normally they'd be not the greatest, and actually where they had a few months break, some of the grounds were like absolute carpets, and it was it was lovely. Yeah. But you know, that was at least one bonus out of it, I suppose. But you know, fingers crossed, the weather's nice. There's not too many sort of uh, frost, not too much rain, and we can actually get a prolonged spell of football in with a bit of luck. Yeah, well, the, the grounds teams around the country have certainly had the time to put into the pitches this year, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. So. From both of you then, one thing we're asking our guests is what's been your most memorable football moment? Something you can remember as clearly as when it first happened. Yeah, so for me in terms of on the sort of coaching side of it, going to the Barcelona Academy, going to spend a day around there was, you know, absolutely fantastic. And kind of linked to that, sort of the more the parent side of it was um, last year taking my son to a Barcelona game. And, you know, we were about 10 rows back and Messi scored a free kick sort of run straight over and we're sort of celebrating together and you know that's a really sort of special moment that I sort of treasure for a very long time. What was uh, the Barcelona ground like compared to the ones you've been to in England? The training facility was was fantastic, didn't, unfortunately didn't get to see the first team train but I think it was the under 19s, we got to saw some some of the, the youth games as well and that was pretty special and yeah, obviously the new camp is uh, pretty amazing to be honest with you. Katie? It's a tricky one because it's kind of a, it's, it's quite a personal memory but but also probably a bit boring to talk about. You know, there's a game I remember vividly from probably three, four years ago, roughly. And you know the games where all of your kind of coaching just comes together and clicks and it's just there, everything. I still remember that game, that like all the details of it. So that's probably my like, I definitely remember that kind of development game and, and seeing all those outcomes more than I do probably you know cup finals and bits and pieces like that so give, that stick, give, sticks give with us me quite a play for that then Katie what what were the outcomes that you were after and and that, that you actually got so we've been working quite a lot in terms of attacking movements and so we saw a lot of them the girls ended up scoring quite a hatful of goals very early on but purely through dominating possession and breaking lines so all of that stuff we've been working on it you know sounds very simple to summarize it in that level but it was just there and it was just <laughs> poetry in motion, <laughs> to use a cliche. But, you know, it's rare that you kind of always see all components come together exactly at once. And that game was 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 it. It was probably stuck in my memory slightly more because I think we were considered underdogs. So the opposition thought that they were going to come out and, uh, and beat us. And, and that didn't happen. All testament to the coaching, eh, Katie? Well... Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think to be honest with you though, for me personally as well, it's I to get the outcomes you want at the game, to see the players that execute the things that you've been working on is more enjoyable for me than the result, to be honest with yeah, you. Exactly. You know, those things are absolutely priceless. And I mean that was just one example, but you know, ultimately what kind of keeps me motivated within coaching as well is is when you do work at something for that amount of time and then you know, be it at an individual level, be it at a team level, like when you see it come into action, that's really rewarding. Everything that we're after as coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your time. 
and for joining us on uh, Earth 18 Talks. All the best when you get back to working with your teams. This has been an Oxfordshire FA production. If you'd enjoyed this team talk, like, comment and share and check out our playlist for future episodes.